you know, for me, magic is magic. I don't really think any of it's dark or good. I just think it's the intention behind it. Like when people say, should I do blood magic? I'm like, sure, why not? If that's how you do your magic, but what are you doing it for? You know, and it's like a lot of people have this stuff. So, you know, I do believe black magic exists, white magic, green magic, all that stuff. But in the end of the day, it's just magic. But I got the spirit animal book. I don't know if you guys, with this book, you intuitively pick your spirit animal. So do you guys want to find out yeah. yours? Okay. Sure. Yeah, let's yeah. Go. yeah, please. So I'm going to flip through and then you tell me when to stop. Stop. Okay, and then tell me when to stop. Stop. So you got the gorilla. Well, it's your boy Dustin from the Flying Chair. It's the Rise with my co host Luna. And we got a special guest today. All the way from West Compton, <laughs> we got Erica Love, and Hello. yeah, she <laughs> she's into the paranormal, and in, she's a UFO enthusiast, and she does these like sketch comedy that's absolutely hilarious. I had to have her on my show because she's just <laughs> awesome, and yeah, thank you again for joining us today. And we just want to hear a little backstory about you, and we're just we're just gonna kick the shit. Yeah, have some fun. Thank you so much for having me, Dustin. I'm excited to talk about all the paranormal things today. <laughs> yeah. So where where'd you grow up originally here in Wisconsin? Um, so I grew up in New Berlin, Brookfield area, and I've lived here until about 16. Then I moved to Arizona for a year, moved back, moved to Chicago, moved back to, moved back again. So been here for the last six years thriving and loving wisconsin cool. yeah oh, yeah well wisconsin is known to have its hot spots and the paranormal and ufos or any like in your town is there any known haunted houses or cemeteries or anything you know i've been meaning to look up more back in the day in high school i used to know more locations me and my friends used to get together and we're like you know let's go explore cemeteries but when I moved back, I'm like, I don't know anywhere around here. So I need to look up hot spots. But like uh, one thing I did find that I want to explore out towards Madison is House on the Rock. Have you heard mm -hmm. of that place? Oh, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like everyone should. Yeah. I feel a little no, late. Tell me about it. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. So um, it's this artist. He, I think he got rejected by Frank Lloyd Wright uh, back in back when um and he went off and built his own museum of all these like whimsical trinkets and every room or it has a bunch of different rooms that are themed um not, and he, I'm not exactly sure all of them I just saw photos and I'm like you know I want to save the surprise and go see it for myself so I actually have that on my calendar to go next week and explore and oh cool film an episode doing that yeah I'll have it out there I went out there once and it's like a long, long time ago. But you're right. It's like really like weird. It kind of looks like he's got like a like a mental disorder, you know, like he's like mentally this crazy. I heard, I heard it can get a little creepy, but yeah. is he like a hoarder? Does he just hoard like all creepy stuff? Or That's like what it sounds like because there's like rooms of just like thousands of trinkets and of the same thing. Some people say that it can get boring but i don't know i feel like it could be exciting <laughs> that's oh, awesome that sounds awesome <laughs> yeah and if or you're a venture i'm sorry oh you're fine here you go first <laughs> no, sorry, if you ever venture into madison there's a hot spot here there's a bar called the ohio off of atwood and okay. it's uh it's known for having uh paranormal activity since like the early 1900s where there's like bizarre fires suicides Oh, no. And even in the, in the bar, there's like bottles being thrown off the shelves and like stools being flipped. And like, so there's been like uh, ghost hunter teams with TV shows who've gone there multiple times and did their little series and stuff like that. So it's like a bit, big hot spot for all these ghost hunters that come through Madison. So I always direct people who never been, have never been there or just, just curious in general before? called oh, the Ohio. It's off of Atwood. I kind of by Willie Street. That's scary though. <laughs> yeah, I it's kind of. I don't want to walk in yeah. somewhere. I heard they have great tacos. 
Oh. I don't know if it's Taco Tuesdays. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. But do they make good guacamole? That's the thing. I don't know. I think I actually haven't eaten there. <laughs> Black, only had a beer there hoping to see something fly off the shelf i i want to i want to i want that to happen i was um at a restaurant over here eating a burger at a pub and we were talking about how we swore we saw more people coming out of the restroom than going in the restroom oh. to our beer. and he was like well people have been saying this place is haunted so i was like sitting at the table i was like ghosts throw something throw something <laughs> they wouldn't do it it didn't happen. I was like, dang it. I would love to see that. Oh, oh that's eerie. So like, yeah. they're saying that they're witnessing more people going into the bathroom, but there wasn't really. I mean, they were just seeing these shadowy. Well, I guess they running. have an apartment above. And one of the ladies had come down and said to the restaurant, are you guys like screaming down here or yelling or anything? Ooh. And they're just like, no, we're fine. So she goes back up and then she comes back down. And she's like, who is throwing stuff? Who is? And they're like, no, we're not. So it's like she's hearing things, seeing things. And like people swore that they saw a bar chair move or like a table end up where it wasn't. I was like, dude, I want to witness this. Do you all not have cameras? Because I want to see this. Oh, my gosh. So, so actually, the house I grew up in or the condo, uh, my mom's place is haunted and my husband and I are buying this condo because she just moved out. <laughs> so we're going to be moving back in soon. And like, I need to get someone in there and spiritually cleanse this place because like, back in the day, me, my sister, my mom and her ex uh, fiance, we were all sitting on the couch and we just saw someone walk from our bathroom to the basement stairs. And, like we all were like, did you just see so that? Cool. So like something cool. like that. Yep. And I was sitting in the basement one time all alone and I had some quarters, like just some change sitting next to me. And I went to grab it and because I was going to go upstairs and one of the quarters was missing. And all of a sudden it comes flying at the back of my head. And I'm th the <laughs> only one home and it just came flying, hit my neck and it fell down the back of my shirt. And I'm like, oh my God, like <laughs> this place is. I can tell you for sure it was a male presence. Oh, was it? Oh my 100%. gosh. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. say you pick up these things. Give, give me a call when you move in. Cause I'll teach you how to do it yourself. So you don't have to pay anybody to do it. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. That yeah, really, yeah, absolutely. I'm grateful for that. It's, easy, it's, easy. it's easy. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was going to be like some big. It's so interesting too. Whenever like haunted places like that, like for me, I have resident ghosts in my house. I like them to stay. I think they're cool. I talk to them. They move stuff. I, you know, I can tell it's not like aggressive. It sounds like the spirit in that house is a little aggressive. They shouldn't be throwing things at you. So obviously it's probably not one you want to have there. And I yeah. always just tell people whenever they call me for cleansings and stuff, it's like, did you ever just tell it to leave? And they're like, no. And I was like, <laughs> try it. Cause most of the time <laughs> it works. They'll just leave. You know, if, if, you know, obviously you want to be nice about it and say, Hey, it's my house. I need you to leave. And you point at the door and most likely you'll never have an issue with them ever again. So oh, wow. it yeah. could be so simple. <laughs> yeah. It could be so simple. Mm -hmm. I was going to have to like learn karate and <laughs> but <laughs> I guess everybody should cleanse their homes before they move into them for sure. Dustin. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, that's so funny. Renovating the place too. So we'll oh, be boy. Yeah. Uh, uh yeah okay. uh yeah <laughs> is this is this house near like a, a railroad or trains yep. at all yes. yes so that might be a lot of your issues uh because that's what i'm hearing um you know uh we'll we'll talk afterwards i think uh i know how to fix your issue with this place and i think that you guys are not the only ones on that street that are probably having issues probably a lot of other people are experiencing the same things or at least the same entities um but i definitely feel like this is more cowboy related uh from the past like a lot of deaths that happened on the um that particular land um you know I, I would probably be able to tell you more if i was in the house with you but yeah for sure i think i think i can help you um subside oh it. i don't think energy is always going to be able to leave that place just because of where it is on the land and property particularly but i think you can kind of put it to a point to where it's not like things throwing stuff at you so yeah or yeah. scaring me like one time i used to have a dog back in the day living there oh. and 
I heard all this running around upstairs and I get up, I was trying to sleep on the couch and I'm like, zero, stop running. And I look down and he's sleeping at my feet. So I'm like, there's just people, something running around upstairs. And oh, that's and, freaky. Yeah. Yeah. I was like 14 back in the day when this happened. So, but that's really cool. I mean, that, that you're able to pick that up and tell me that right away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Oh, she she'll surprise yeah. you. I really hope something comes through. <laughs> yeah, giving me the chills over here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I love it. That's why I don't no. have a lot of friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Insane over here. <laughs> no, seriously, yeah. Luna is she's so, got like, a gift, and then Luna's I actually love got it. People himself. So. Luna actually has an identical twin. Like if, she, if Luna doesn't, if didn't didn't have tattoos, you wouldn't like tell them apart. Seriously. Oh my I gosh. Would it's super so cool. crazy. Yeah, so I think that so like twins have a certain mm -hmm. insight, I believe. Too. Oh yeah, and she yeah. has the abilities too. She just turns it off more. But for me, I'll just like I'll just go up and tell somebody I don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna ruin someone's day at like Walgreens or something. Yeah, oh no, my god! I won't do it again. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, because you don't know people's beliefs, and if you go sure, up and sure. tell grandma standing next to them you could completely shatter their religious and spiritual sure. beliefs that's not really my job to do that no, you no, know no. like sure. if i have permission like here then i'll yeah. definitely do it mm -hmm. and a lot of my friends already know that if i see something i'm gonna say it to them like straight up that's there is so that. cool so, mm -hmm. yeah and then uh have you <laughs> have you uh have you witnessed any ufo activity over the sky of wisconsin over wisconsin not in Wisconsin, in Chicago, I saw oh. some things. So oh, okay. that Let's was hear. back in like October 2017. But um, I was at a friend's house and we'd go outside to smoke cigarettes. And we, I, we both saw like three, it looked like three UFOs and they were gone. And then all of a sudden they disappeared. And it didn't look like any of those military things. It was so long ago, like trying to remember exactly but you know we were yeah. both looking at each other like what the fuck oh, excuse my language <laughs> no okay. please okay, please, 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 okay. <laughs> um and then i got my phone out because i'm trying to take video and i see like all these green dots flying all over in the video and it's not moving with how my phone camera is mm. so that's when i, I started it's like the first time i really started seeing paranormal stuff um within that time frame too there i was trying to sleep in a room and i looked in this tv reflection it was pitch black in there but in this tv reflection i could see a face and i'm like okay i'm recording this like it's pitch black in the room i'm telling you and <laughs> it wasn't a glossy tv screen either it was uh like a more matte finish yep. and in this video, it looks like a clown, like just opening their mouth, coming towards the camera. And I, I don't have this video anymore because it got uh, lost throughout my new phones, but I had shown so many people and I'm like, tell me I'm uh, not crazy. And they're like, no, you're not crazy. Like there is something in that TV screen, like coming uh, towards, because I wasn't moving at all. And but something on that screen was, it was, is this that same house? No, this was a condo in Chicago. One of my friends that I used to hang out with. Um, uh, what crazy Pennywise shit is that? <laughs> it's crazy you say that because this guy would always dress up as Pennywise. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, like for Halloween and stuff. But that's so funny. Didn't you, Luna, didn't you have like a video of like a balloon popping, a red balloon popping right in front of oh. you? Yeah. I, I went to, <laughs> that's a little uh, Pennywise-ish. Oh yeah, at Atchison, Kansas, uh, the McIntyre Villa. Uh, that's near like the Sally House and all those like really famous houses that are in paranormal shows. But uh, we had brought two balloons because the owner, Steph, she told us that the spirits like to play with balloons a lot. So we just went to Walmart and we just got two balloons. And he's like, what color? I was like, red, of course, duh. Like it's going <laughs> to be great for the show, you know? And so we go there and we're sitting in our van waiting for Steph to show up to give us the keys to be on the property. Because we basically had it for 14 hours, which was awesome. Um, and we're sitting in there and out of nowhere, one of them pops. And I just like, I have sensory issues. So that just like scared the shit 
out of me so bad. And I'm just like, I'm looking around and I'm just like, there's no reason for this balloon to pop. And for me, being a logical person, I was like, listen, it could have been hot. You know, maybe he overfilled it. Maybe something happened. But I swear to you, that should have never popped. But then if you watch the whole episode at the end of it, we had end up just putting the balloon, just letting it sit on the ceiling because it's full of helium. And we were showering and everything. And there's cameras throughout the whole house. And they, we did end up catching it. But um, the balloon had moved its way all the way up the stairs, all the way down the hall. And like in those old Victorian homes, they have like these recessed ceilings through the doors. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. if a balloon was just kind of moving with the air, it would stop there. Nope, it straight came down went under the door, went up and just moved. The string wasn't being pulled. It was like as if somebody was holding it and walking it down the hallway huh. to the doll room that had this like um uh what what a mannequin, but it was on strings, a puppet in this thing and it sat right right in front of this um puppet and it just hovered there. It just hovered there. And there should be no reason as to why a helium balloon one day old is just hovering in the middle yeah. of the room. Yeah, there's I caught footage of it. So you want to talk about creepy clown doll stuff that like I that was probably one of the craziest paranormal experiences I've ever witnessed, because when we we actually caught it, when we went to the room with our camera, my um, my husband saw the balloon go like this and he goes, oh, oh, my God, oh, my God, it moved again. So something pulled it down like this. And oh it's like God. because, you know, he, you know, balloons that are deflated, they kind of move funny. You know what I'm saying? And this one was very much had like. Yeah, somebody was pulling on it for sure. So I, I believe it was the child in the house grabbed the balloon wow. and broke it to the to the puppet. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's scary. <laughs> yeah, it was. It's it, um, I did not want to be alone, and that that says a lot about me because like to, I go to a lot of haunted houses, but I did not want to be alone after that. That was a, uh, that was very much like where's the the holy water and the sage and the, yeah. Hey Georgie. Yeah, that's the that, swear. <laughs> Like, honestly, you would have thought that that was in an It movie. Like, it was so creepy. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> running. <laughs> I never thought oh, Baloo could be creepy. Um, uh, you know, I have another question about the condo I'm moving into. So when I had moved back from Chicago, I lived with my mom for a year to get back on my feet. And I had my first sleep paralysis that mm -hmm. night or one night. And I woke up and... Well, I mean, I was still asleep, but I, in the reflection of my mirror was a man and he was telling me like secrets. I can't really remember everything he said, but one thing he said was that my grandmother was going to get brain cancer. And then a couple months later she had brain cancer and like, mm. I don't know. Have you ever had experiences like with sleep paralysis like that or? Oh yeah, absolutely. Sleep paralysis yeah. is absolutely terrifying. It's a hundred percent terrifying. Um, usually most people experience it in their lifetime, but when you live in a really haunted place, kind of like your, your condo, you're moving back into it, you can experience it. I do believe that that was a different male figure though, than the one that's been throwing stuff. Cause I think the one I see like a hat with the other guy that throws stuff. It, it, he gives me kind of like inspector gadget vibes with like his hat, <laughs> and like, you know, the coat he wears and things, which gives me like cowboy era. I think that what you were talking to was more along the lines of a guide um, um, than you were like a ghost. So, um, yeah, yeah um, I believe that when we are in rim, rim state, so that's right between where you hit a dream, but where you're still kind of awake is when you can receive most messages, which is the, you know, the best time to manifest the best time to quantum jump, like all those things to like create the reality you're looking for in life. If I lost anybody, I'm sorry, audience. Um, but, uh, yeah. So I think that you were in that state to where they were like, we need to give you this message. And I think it was very much a direct message. You know, for me, it's always tough when somebody tells somebody a message of someone's going to die because it's like, what do you want me to do? I can't yeah. stop it from happening, you know, but I think that your guide was telling you because your grandma and you were close, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was one of those things to prepare you for. But I also think, too, that you have abilities as well because people just aren't attracted to these things in life and they don't just end up in haunted houses for no reason. So for you particularly, I do think you have abilities and I think you actually have experienced way more than probably what you're willing to share with a lot of people. But I think if you tapped into it, I think that you definitely could 
figure out more messages, but I definitely think that was a guide looking after you to prepare you. Cause I don't think you were even prepared for her death. Even when she died, I still no. think that it still affected you, even though you knew. Um, hmm. Yeah. So do you have any advice on how to tap into, you know, practice these abilities? Cause my astrologer, when I first met her, she was like, Oh yeah, you're psychic. I mean, I know I'm psychic. I just, don't know how to oh you're far oh. more you're a medium you're just like yeah, and a medium yeah she she said a psychic and a medium <laughs> so. Yeah. so a psychic can a psychic can tell you now and into the future um mm -hmm. and a medium can talk to the dead that's the difference between the two i believe you are always going to have haunted homes you're always going to have things following you because you've got this light about you i call us like the lighthouses we mm -hmm. are the lighthouses and the ghosts are the are the boats in the ocean our light attracts them to us so it's not like we can ever really shut it down um, but for you, I would start tapping into your spirit guides, especially the male that came to you, um, in the mirror. Uh, that's mm -hmm. one of your guides for sure, because I don't think he's anything to be scared of at all. Um, so the fact that you actually had met your guide, I would dig deeper into that. I actually have a YouTube meditation, a guided meditation on how to meet your spirit guides that I can send you the link to. Um, I think the best bet is to open yourself up to them and figure out their names and who they are, because they're the ones that talk to the other side and give you the messages. So I don't like directly talk to your grandma. It's your grandma talking to my guide and my guide telling me these things to give you messages. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, I definitely would say finding your spirit guides and just opening yourself up. Like when you see something, don't just brush it off, like really dig into it and try to find answers. Like just say out loud, like, who are you? What are you looking for? Give me an answer. I always tell people the coolest thing to do with your guides is like, say, hey, you know, I'm really trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do with this car situation or this house situation. Can you show me like a red balloon as a yes and maybe like a blue flower as a no? So try to see if you can find those those signs in real life like don't do like a white car if you drive a white car if that makes sense you know uh -huh. do something that'd be a little difficult that you wouldn't typically see on day-to-day -day stuff and see if you can get answers just through seeing things throughout the day that's always fun to do too um <laughs> So the thing is, is like you're so open to it anyway I think that once that door is completely open just be prepared because I really feel like you're gonna get a lot of answers to a lot of things Oh, so. that's exciting. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You might be scared of it, but you shouldn't be. And I, the thing was, is I was scared of it too. But then when I opened it up, I wasn't scared of it anymore because I realized it's not as scary as you think it is. Um, it's just more of the burden of knowing things and what to share and what not to share. Yeah. I say back in the day we were, we tried to mess around with Ouija boards, but I always was that person that got scared and backed off. I mean, oh yeah. I have like four Ouija boards behind me. I love Ouija boards. There's nothing to be yeah. afraid of. You know, they're just a piece of cardboard. It's your intention behind it. Anything you do when you go into something scared or you're terrified of it, that's the energy you're putting into it. So obviously yeah. you know, if you're going to use a Ouija board, have purpose behind it, you know, don't just play with it for no reason, but oh, you can yeah. open up a door with anything, you know, Ouija yeah. boards have a bad connotation because of all the movies and stories that people yeah. have. You know, that's why I do my wellness switch stuff so I can raise my vibration and try to keep negative thoughts out as much as possible and go into things with more confidence and manifest. Do you have a lot of nightmares? Every night. Yep. <laughs> it's like the same repetitive ones too. It's wow. like I yeah. need to do like something really break this like, huh? They're gruesome. Some yep. of them. Plane crashes getting shot yeah. I'm yeah. always out of town and I'm <laughs> trying to get back home to get to work but then I can't find my cats and then all of a sudden there's a room with a bunch of cats that look like my cats so I'm like I don't know oh my god my cat. that like, is a nightmare yeah <laughs> yeah I'm a cat yeah, lover so I'll be like oh my god chased and murdered and but the plane crash dreams those ones are a little out of hand <laughs> yeah, yeah multiple that's terrifying people. yeah that's a part of your abilities Ooh. is it yep oh can you explain more into that so when you're a medium 
most mediums have really gruesome nightmare dreams. So we can tell you the smell, the taste, the time in our dreams. We can tell you detail for detail. Or some are like, I don't even remember my dream. I was like, let me tell you all about all 12 of mine last night. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a plane crash. Um, you know, you're just, you're, it could be that you're living times that these things have happened or you're seeing things before they happen. Um, for me, I'm very much a, um, um, I forgot the word for it. I think it's, uh, it's not poetic. It's, it's man, it's on the tip of my tongue, but it's where I know when something's going to happen in my dream. I get most of my messages through my dream. So, so do you, you're the, you're the same way I am. So when I wake up and I get horrible deja vu, which I'm sure you've had before, like just out of nowhere, just deja vu, like you've been there, done that. It's because you've dreamt it. So uh, you'll just dream little funny things of you watching a show. You're like, wow, I have deja vu for me watching this show. But then you'll actually have ones of real plane crashes and things happening to people and stuff. But look at how many plane crashes and horrible things are happening to planes right now. I know. Sure. I'm like, there, right? is, there are a lot. <laughs> so you, you got all these that. crazy people in these fucking planes, too. So I'm like, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am fucking like flying. We're down, we're down <laughs> on the plane where she's like, that motherfucker is not real. Like, oh, that's uh, right. Whatever That's happened right. to that? You know, I heard that woman disappeared. Did you hear about that too? Like, she came out. She actually came back out again in public, and she just... told people that she was, um, uh, she was drunk or something, and that Weird. wasn't what people thought yeah. it was. Okay, you know? it's was still crazy. very eerie. But all yeah. of us are just like, nah. She was paid off to say that because she looked completely different in the interview yeah. than she did in the video. Wow. Not the same girl that was in the video. Yeah. yeah. So something's off about that. But, you know, um, no, just really listen to your dreams. You know, honestly, before you go to bed at night, just ask, ask your guides to show you what it is you need to know and what it is you're looking for. And just start, just start doing that. Cause you're just like me. I hate it though. Cause deja vu is the worst. Yeah. <laughs> you're just like, I don't know what I'm supposed to know right now, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for that advice. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the meditation as well. So like definitely need to get more into meditating. Yeah. Especially so- since you're in the pagan side of things and you study witchcraft. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm like, I need to make more time for it and do a lot of it in the bathtub though. And I, you know, but you know what, there's a reason why you do it because you're meant to do it. You, oh, yeah. you know, you probably have a long line of uh, witches in your family that date far back, you know? Um, so, you know, I don't know how much you want to dig into your history, but you probably should just to see where it goes. And it usually comes from the women in the family. Well, well I wish I knew more about my family, but I know nothing about uh-huh. it. There's a lot of secrets. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, I like, you know, couple, like maybe. the last couple of year, I'm like, maybe these secrets have to do with witchcraft. I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, Wisconsin, you know, yeah. had a lot of witches and we are from up North and like, Sometimes I think that my bloodline was cursed and like, I'm the one in my family breaking the curse. Hmm. That's you interesting. Should go with that. You wouldn't think that for any reason. You should go with that. You should really trust your instincts. Um, there's, there's, I always tell people when you get into witchcraft or you start, you t- see dead people or you're around a lot of haunted things or weird things happen to you, there's a reason for it. It's history reliving itself. It's meant to be in your life. And I always tell people that don't fight it. Yeah. You know, and it's funny you say that too, Luna, that I've, I've been told that in the UFO community that like I was meant to have what I'm having and doing what I'm doing because of my one experience myself that like got me. <laughs> indulge in the subject so heavily and doing what i'm doing now so again this is you're right yeah. something like will impact you so heavily where it sets you on your on your path and i, I think you are starting to do that i see it like because you just started a, your youtube channel and you did kind of like your first video is kind of expressing how you got into this and who you oh, are yeah. so yeah. again you're like i think you are stepping forward as being taken serious and yeah, and I, I, that's what I liked about you too. I was like, damn, hell yeah, that's that's what's I up. Making sense in my life, and then I, you know, I just started researching more things, and it all led to witchcraft. I'm like, oh, yeah, all witchcraft. I'm doing like all my health stuff. I'm like, it is witchcraft, and yeah, I dug oh, more so. into that. Now I'm making intention oils and oh, cool, candle spells and whatnot. And you know, it's definitely a learning process. You know, it's been new to me for the last 
couple years and sure learn as I go and it's fun. And yeah. And finding the right people to network with too. Yeah. I'm going to say it led me to meeting you guys. Yes. yes. Yeah. I'm excited. And I'm, I'm yeah. pretty sure yeah. you'll find yeah. yourself. I have a whole apothecary as you see. So if you oh. ever want to look yeah. at some things like that, you're more than willing to always hit me up and stuff. Cause that's what yeah. I do. Thank you so much. I'm like, it's awesome. it's all network together yeah and, bes- and besides all the witchery stuff you're funny as shit with all the all the comedy uh skits that you do on your instagram and i don't know if you have a tiktok or whatever but again super fucking funny and i think you should pursue that as another side hobby because why the fuck not right oh, like, yeah. <laughs> if you have a fucking funny bone fucking use it right <laughs> yeah, i uh dancer for 10 years so a lot of my notes are (laughs) about stories from when i was a dancer and yeah that was the best kind my god (laughs) (laughs) lived a funny life (laughs) so yeah you you can start with the this one time this tijuana girl (laughs) and this donkey (laughs) well let me tell you guys a story (laughs) Um, yeah right you know how they well, uh, in strip clubs, they have their bachelor parties, so they put their homie on stage, and there's two girls, and they just kind of beat the shit out of the guy. Yep. <laughs> they, like, rip his boxers, ride him around <laughs> like a horse, beat him with his belt. Well, one time, <laughs> they put one of the guys that got put up there, he was a cop. And as we're like beating on him, his gun falls out on stage. So <laughs> I was like, I should have grabbed a gun and been like, don't resist. But <laughs> he was really pissed off that his friends put him up there. So he, as soon as his gun fell out, he put it back in. He's like, getting out of here. And his boxers are all ripped and whatnot. So we're going to turn that into some comedy. Yeah, sure. that so, is hilarious. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if that could have turned ugly if he did grab his gun like that, you know? Like, oh, yeah. them. <laughs> like <laughs> nah, it's not gonna fly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell oh, you what, because I was a dancer for almost 10 years as well in South Florida. Oh. So, oh. you know, I worked a lot throughout the clubs down there, and you meet the weirdest fucking people and some of the nicest people, but I have I cannot tell you the stories that I have that are just in like people don't believe me tell us tell us like one. no definitely not because this is not about me today but i would tell you that I mean, you can definitely make comedy gold out of sure being a dancer in a club because it's just it's like most people think you're lying but you're not it's like no. this legit happens in your life things. will literally feel like a movie like is this serious right now <laughs> yeah that's yeah. funny just so like a book. <laughs> yeah Love to. <laughs> so love so what got you doing the skits did you just feel like did someone just kind of like hey you should start doing that you just feel like i'm gonna start doing this because i love doing it and i think i am funny or because yeah, again I, I i i find you hilarious and yeah i think your so fans much. too so i i've been wanting to make these skits for a long time since like 2016 i wanted to start off on youtube And I tried to get a team together and, you know, I thought I had one and it just never happened. Like you never executed the idea. And in the past couple of years, I made some friends and I'm like, okay, guys, like we should make these reels, but they just never get executed once again. Mm -hmm. I'm scrolling Instagram one day and I don't know if you guys know who Stormy G or Angela Mazzanti are, but they popped up and they are literally the same kind of humor. They're different versions of me and my friends just living in LA. I'm like, I have like my own jokes that are, you know, similar style of comedy. So I'm like, all right, I'm not waiting anymore. I'm like, they're hilarious. I love what they're doing. I'm like, I need to get my ideas and my notes and bring them to life. So I busted out the wigs and (laughs) playing multiple roles. Yeah. And I actually want to go towards being one of Austin Powers secret agents. <laughs> Agent. <Yes! laughs> so I have an LED scooter. I'm actually having uh, a night, uh, later with my friends and my other friend got a scooter too. And she's going to be my uh, partner. And we're going to start that, doing more skits down that 
but that we, is awesome yes I please do powers. yes <laughs> i call everyone on my banana phone and <laughs> yes i know I, I get that banana phone i like that one you had like that oh here it is like, like, oh there it is yeah yes yeah. <laughs> Yes, and then you had that like corn dildo too. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "What?" My corn on the cob awesome. dildo. <laughs> yeah, so I love Austin Powers a lot. Yeah. So, like, like, do I make you corny, baby? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. it's so good. And you're so my animated. I always wanted your face to do looks, your facial. Is, oh man, oh, yeah. Jim Carrey. Yeah, all oh, my Botox is dissolved so my facial expressions are very <laughs> no i was just saying like the fact that oh, you're, no. you're very saying. animated in general i'm just saying like, yeah, it's like, yeah. Oh, no, I, I know what you're saying but i'm just saying i just have way more facial expressions right now because i have no <laughs> you don't need it oh no i like i actually kind of like it i like you know yeah. it's i feel more authentic <laughs> 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 that's all well hey we're all about body modification around here so oh, i mean i love that i mean i, miss I, mean, I like how we get, we're all solar tad <laughs> here you, you got some beautiful work there that's dope. thank you thank you so i'm actually working on my back piece right now too really i you know what my sister is in the hot seat right now as we speak she's getting tattooed oh, so actually yeah. i'm gonna run to the tattoo parlor after we're done having this conversation i can catch a glimpse of her getting inked yes, up yeah, Boiled. That's why I got this stuff on my hands. And that's oh, not so, and that beautiful. I like that's how bold cool. and black that is. I love that. Yeah, it's, it's actually sick. the pentacle, then the pentagram. I always think it's funny because then I can go like this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so that did not feel good. Did not feel no. good. Yeah, I'm no. terrified to get my hands done. My last one was so painful. Um, for some reason, the numbing cream didn't work. So oh no. <laughs> Every other time it did, but I'll show you guys. It's my. Yeah. Yes. Oh wow! Oh my god! That's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh my god. Won't pull it down too. Wow. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Geometric Jesus. behind it. And that is awesome. <laughs> it fits Ow. your body so well. Yeah. I have like nothing on my back on purpose. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> what you say? The, the back hurt. It does, but yeah. if you have numbing cream, it helps out a lot. But I would just recommend tracking your cycle because the numbing cream doesn't work when you're PMSing. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I've experienced that a couple times and I'm trying to get all my life, <laughs> my life in the chair. <laughs> older, the older you get, the worse they hurt. Yes. Yeah. You know, I'm like, yes. I have better ideas for tattoos when I'm older than when I did when I was 18. Like <laughs> I got a couple I wish I could get rid of, but I'm not going to sit and get lasered off. That sounds awful. <laughs> Yeah, if I if I if I did want to do something, I'd probably do a blackout, you yeah. know, or do I'm all I'm all black and gray already. So right. yeah, I just I love it. I just love tattoos. And it's been like six years since I got tattooed. I'm way overdue. So I think seeing my sister getting tattooed today might just like just give me the good nudge for like next week. <laughs> all right, we're going. We're doing something. Jesus. We're putting it across your forehead. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> See, my first face tattoo, and I'm just addicted. Oh, cool. Now I'm like, oh, I have to be careful because now I'm gonna want more. Yes, yeah. yeah. You know? I love that. It's a little moon. They're, they're addicting. <laughs> I have a little heart on my face too. Oh, cool. <laughs> and I kind of wanted something on the other one, but I'm like, I'm afraid to overdo it. Yeah, sure. shame. Sure. Turn out, to turn out like a uh, Takashi six nine. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. You know these people are putting themselves to sleep to get fully tatted. Oh whoa. Yep. That's insane. I always said I'm like, I if I'm gonna get my stomach I tattooed, I have to go under because even doing acupuncture, when she gets a needle nearby, it I just start twitching really badly and I'm like, get it away. So there is a, a tattoo parlor in Italy. They were having a project called the Blackout Project. But it was like these, it's a form of tattooing that's very chaotic and very almost torturous in a sense. But it's for the the experience of pain. But again, it's, so they take big gauge needles, you know, it's like the big ones. And just fucking, just doing like really helter-skelter work on oh, these yeah. people, people who are wanting these things done to them. But just for the the whole experience of the the pain and the, and it's therapeutic for some of these people who like the extreme body modificators yeah. but i thought that was very uh 
very cool and unique. I love that dark art in a sense. So I'm I don't know if I, I, I don't know if I could do it though. Yeah. <laughs> like the chaotic I just. Yeah. God, I don't know how I used to be in pain back in the day. I'm like, if I get pinched <laughs> even a little yeah, right? bit. <laughs> <laughs> or you ever see those uh, people who do like, it's like three or four people tattooing one person at one time. It's an orgy of tattooing. Oh my God. No. God yeah, I don't know. The tattoo train. Choo choo. <laughs> <laughs> but you, I always wonder where tattoos stem from. Was it an accident? Like a, one of our ancient ancestors got a cut in their foot and like some mud got into it and it healed and it turned into a mark. Oh, that's kind of cool. Or was it ancient astronauts that actually had somewhat tattoos or scarification in a sense? And they're like, oh, we're going to copy the gods because, you know, we're already elongating their heads like the gods. So I mean, some slap with the Mayans and the Egyptians. Yeah. 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 But again, we're already a step further. Like, where did yeah. it really? Yeah. Like, where did it base really... from? Because, uh, well, with me, uh, like the cargo cult really sits well with how how weird our society is with meeting godlike creatures. I don't know if you know what the cargo cults are, Erica. <laughs> well, let me just give you a little brief. <laughs> Yeah. about about it so during world war ii when we were fighting the japanese in the pacific islands some of those islands were inhabited by indigenous people that had never seen an airplane before and then we were landing on these islands these indigenous were hiding in the bush like what the fuck these are like gods like coming down these flying birds and shit <laughs> so they're um after americans left these islands the and natives started making runways out of the middle of the jungle making life-size bamboo fetishes of airplanes with straws and um, bamboo and shit and then they would write usa in the chest with bamboo rifles and they'd march uh to entice other planes who are flying by to land on their flying port because they think that their ancestors are the ones that are bringing bring these planes in the first place but they think that some crafty white man pirate thing is taking these yeah. things but, <laughs> but um again so that's what stemmed these cargo cults there's 150 of them and there's even ancient cargo cults that go even further back. Like you look at ancient India talking about multiple uh, gods of blue skin. And when they left, they started making their temples out of the shapes of Amanas, the flying vehicles that the gods were using. And then yeah. even something like uh, in Brazil, there's the Kayapo Indians that have this story about this thing that came with fire and smoke on top of their mountain, came into the village with this bulbous suit, like an astronaut with a glass helmet and white skin and beard and shit. And then all the brave ones who were there fucking try to fight it and throw its spears and arrows at it and it turned to dust. And he, he had a weapon himself. And he's like, fuck that. And he, he <laughs> points it at a tree and explodes and all the Indians run away. And he stood in the village for days. And then some of the brave ones came with food and offered to his feet. And then he started speaking their language. And they're like, what the fuck? How do you know our shit? And then he's like, well, let me teach you all this shit, agriculture, mathematics. And then they actually have a school that still exists today uh, named after him, Bep Karoti. Um, but again, stayed with the villagers, married one of the women. Then he took off on a spaceship. <laughs> so, all these stories. And... Yeah, I've never heard these stories. See, yeah. I want to learn more about history, but I'm like, I always want to make sure I'm getting like the right. Yeah. We'll, talk to, this, so, we'll, like... we'll talk to this guy. <laughs> yeah, I was saying, if you have like, any like book recommendations or if like yeah. any other episodes yeah. I could watch. To... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, well, obviously, uh, uh, fly oh, Chariots of the Gods. I was going to name my show. <laughs> Chariots of the Gods, written by Eric Von Donikin, is a great start. Uh, just a great concept to get the ancient astronaut theory rolling. Yeah, the new, uh, he points out great cultures all around the world that experience these cargo cults and that's uh, awesome yeah. I've been getting into norse mythology lately oh, too cool. um cool. my astrologer first time i met with her she's like you know you should work with god odin and i didn't know what she meant but i was like okay and i started researching into them and reading more and i've had a couple you know what? Give me one second. My cat's trying to get out. Sure. <laughs> cat won't let me out. Yeah. <laughs> mix. I want chicken. I want liver. Yow mix. Yow mix. Please. Oh, yeah. So right away I had like some encounters with him and I need to meditate to try to have more encounters with them. But yes, yeah, so I'm getting into the Norse mythology, but there's 
so much to learn. I... Guna, do you know much about that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, as I say, she's Absolutely. she's looking at her lips on this one. She's like, mm -hmm. but that's my dude. I love Odin. I, you know, Odin is a very powerful god, and he's everywhere. You know, he's everywhere. Like you'll find a lot, a lot of messages from him. Um, yeah, I would just study them, especially if you're going to be getting into a lot of the pagan stuff. Um, you know, it's always good to find a specific deity or God that you'd like to work with for protection and like one that you flow with. I think that's always really good. Um, there's always a number one rule though. Don't tell people who you work with. Oh no. Oh. So when you do work with somebody, don't tell anybody because that's a way for somebody to, either ruin your spell work ruin your magic work um it's just something they have over you so it's always best to keep that to yourself so i thought i'd just share that really quickly <laughs> so you don't tell so people like, i work with odin you know um but yeah odin is amazing um he is amazing um i would say look at more of the darker gods for spell yeah. work like that not because you want to do wrong by people just because they're very strong um and yeah i'm we can definitely get more into it because I don't want to spill too much for public, but yeah, definitely I would look for more into the darker gods. Yeah, that um, that people like, think that are like not good, you know what I'm saying? Like Loki and things like that. Um, but uh, I think that you'll resonate a lot with, with Norse pagan for sure. Awesome. Uh, unfortunately we can't do sacrificial stuff anymore. <laughs> or like the pagans used to do, yeah. you know, like bring that over they, that they baby. Would... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I'm gonna drink it's adrenochrome. Yeah, I was Could you imagine I mean, like going to go not. grab your Starbucks and you go to the park and they're doing a sacrificial thing with a lamb in the park and you're sitting there with your Starbucks. Could you imagine yeah. if that's <laughs> no. today? You're just nothing like, to see here, folks. Sure <laughs> Can you splash that blood in this? <laughs> so you might want to skip over the sacrificial part of Norse paganism, but other than that, it's amazing. You know, <laughs> imagine if that was still a part of today. No. <laughs> Oh God, that'd be horrible. Yeah, honestly, yeah. And then like their torture, like blood eagles and things like that, like how they used to torture people and stuff. Like, oh, you guys don't With know what eagles? A blood, eagle. blood eagle. Do you know what a blood eagle is? No. <laughs> Children, they, they... Eat your ears and cover your eyes. Um, a blood eagle. So their torture, the way that they used to torture people. So the pay that the Vikings were no joke, but basically the they would take their axe and hack along the spine. They would huh. rip it open, take their lungs and rip their lungs from front to back and give them oh. and that and they would be alive. <laughs> their ultimate death no. and you could not scream during a blood eagle because if you did you wouldn't get into the gates of Valhalla that was there oh, damn very, yep mm -hmm. so if you scream that is you get so into the macabre that is yeah. crazy yep huh. <laughs> Vikings so are the no joke. like yeah the Norse Norse pagan is, is an interesting culture to learn about it's very beautiful and very dark and uh violence <laughs> does, does violence. thor get into that or is that too much greek yes. mythology okay yep, thor. Thor. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. all every single time i hear a thunderstorm or whatever i'll be like man thor's the thor's showing off today you know, <laughs> you know? that's oh, awesome a little thor hammer on my altar yeah. <laughs> yeah. should i probably not talk about all this <laughs> No, you totally can. Absolutely. Oh, okay. I'm like, because I did hear something like, don't ever show people your altar. Otherwise, you know, they could. You know, it, as far it. as altar goes, like I'll have my altar out for everyone to see. I live in a tiny house though. So it's hard for me to have a really massive altar. Mine's like directly behind me. But yeah. like, you know, the thing is, is like, you could put anything on your altar, you know, like, let's say your niece gives you like a cute little Barbie slipper. And it was like, here, auntie, you know, and then you put that on your altar because it means something to you. It's like, you don't always have to have like super witchy stuff or whatever. So if somebody sees that Barbie shoe, what are they going to know? You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like. For me, I wouldn't really care, but you know, everyone's going to tell you something different. And I think the great thing about magic and spirituality and what it is that you believe it's, it's all intimate to who you are, you know? So I think that you just go with what you feel is right. And if you don't want to show people your altar, you don't have to. And if you're sure. okay with it, it's fine. I don't, you know, magic is all about intention and the more power you give somebody else just has that much more power over you. So yeah. I always tell people, listen, you don't have to pay a witch 
witch or a psychic $250 to get rid of your quote unquote hex. Just stop giving the person power. Just say that they don't have power over me and truly believe it. And there you go. It's as yeah. simple as that, you know? So it's, yeah. um, it's yeah, all about sadly, oh, sorry. no, you're good. You're good. I was going to say, like, sadly, the paranormal world has just got more of a, like a cesspool. And Luna yeah. has experienced that and dealt with a bunch of people who come from this culture that just, just simply won't for own or just can't fucking read these messages that just, like, plainly say, say, like, what she does and, you know, what's appropriate and what's not appropriate to contact her. And it's just, like, these people just totally just blindsided. It's like, fuck them. And then, say the most craziest shit to you and uh so yeah maybe you want to give some pre-warnings and maybe steer away from you know just do your own thing i feel like this yeah know. you know yeah. there's gonna be a lot of people in this field who are going to tell you what you should and shouldn't do and it's a bunch of bs like honestly just live like what i always say here's the rule of thumb live with love as long as you're sharing and spreading as much love and positivity as possible, then you're doing right. Who gives a crap if you hail Satan? Who gives a crap if you hail Loki? Who ha who gives a crap if you like Jesus or don't? It doesn't matter because that's not up to that person to tell you what's right or wrong. It's what's right. within here. And that's yeah. that's the secret about witchcraft and magic. It's all about love. That's it. If you're out to do wrong for people, then you're probably going to get some bad karma dish back to you. But that's that's it. You know, so for me, I just listen to what I think is right. And that's the end of the story. I'm not going to pay somebody hundreds and thousands of dollars. And, and that and that's the thing. It drives me nuts. Kind of like what we talked about, how not a lot of certain people will help you with certain platforms because they want to gatekeep things. A lot yeah. of witches, psychics and mediums will gatekeep stuff, too. And it's like, why? There's no that th why? Like, why are we doing that? Why can't we just help each other without asking for a big dollar price in return? It's just that's not the whole point of it, you know, so. Exactly. I That's digress. One of my <laughs> slogan is actually do it with love or don't do it at all for my wellness switch brand. Yeah. Right. Love like, it. You're going to go far with that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I'm like, I've seen some, a lot of people mess with black magic throughout my life and I never have, but you know, hearing their experiences, they aren't living happy lives and it always comes back at them like doing a love spell or doing anything for your gain that takes away from someone else like you're gonna get bad karma for that so yeah. always steer clear and always do it from a place of love and mm -hmm. magic everyone. you're always giving something in return for asking for something from the planet the universe whatever yeah. you believe mother earth so um you know for me magic is magic i don't really think any of it's dark or good i just think it's the intention behind it like when people say should i do blood magic i'm like sure why not if that's how you do your magic, but what are you doing it for? You know, and it's like a lot of people have this stuff. So, you know, I do believe black magic exists, white magic, green magic, all that stuff. But in the end of the day, it's just magic, you know, yeah. it's just magic. It, you believe it always... in magic. Yep, exactly. So, <laughs> you know, I think it's those people who go against and say, I want to see this person fail. So I'm going to do everything I can to put all my energy into that person. That's not good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's not good. You probably shouldn't be doing that, but you know, it is what it is. And be prepared for a lot of people to try to stop you in your tracks and talk a lot of crap about you because this field, even though it's supposed to be about love and kindness and bringing people forward, it, it you will find a lot of the opposite and be very close to who you bring close to you because a lot of people are pretend to be your friends, but they're not. <laughs> they're yeah. absolutely not. I've been, there I've been, are a lot of snakes in the community. Uh, Especially yeah. the paranormal community. Yeah. We have our own snakes in our UFO community too, but oh, that no. is not as crazy. But no, yeah, it's sad that we all can't just work together. And then the fact that I love work networking with people who are cool and yeah, I just hey, love promoting. I, have, I would say I love the energy of all this. It's a bummer when you find out the people you thought were your friends are actually against you or they want to be you <laughs> yeah yep. well, you know what we, coming to find out doing a lot of this a lot of people live by curious by curious through us and just because yeah. they they're not doing the stuff that we're doing actually going out to the field meeting a lot of these people uh and doing these podcasting and doing all the editing and doing like mm -hmm. Una does so much you wouldn't believe like this girl just does it on the grind this is what she does for a living like this <laughs> seriously you you do you you, you to know how to like edit, I don't know how to shit. I have, I, I'm so glad I have Daniel as my colleague. But 
knows how to do all the editing and yeah. So again, just, just how long have crazy. you guys had this podcast for? Uh, just a little over a year now. So like, um, yeah, Luna's new to our podcast. She was a guest a year ago when we had it first coming up, and we loved her. She's just that was a great episode, by the way. <laughs> and I just thought, and then I heard that she was. Uh, having problems in the uh, in her community where she's just had enough and she just wanted to switch it up and i was like oh, i think it'd be a perfect opportunity to ask her she'd like to join us <laughs> and she's like hell yeah, yeah. yeah it's so awesome. I, was like, I was like fuck yeah that's dope and yeah she's been a great help and she's been doing such a great job and very enthusiastic and um and she just again no seriously and, and w- again you surprised me with your magic when you were with our other host making them cry with uh, their dead loved ones and stuff like that. So again, it's really cool. Yeah, strong <laughs> strong yeah. supportive team. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Again, we're here to support you and uh, please keep doing what you're doing. And uh, if you're ever in Madison, let's, let's hang out. Let's go kick it. Let's go have a beer. Let's That's go see good. some, uh, some ghost bars and shit. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I, I have a list of things I want to do and I'm looking to add more to that. I want to see more paranormal things and more nature hiking and yeah yeah no i see i've been seeing watching your videos of the ant i think you went to the zoo or some like it was the mackenzie uh, i went on a safari to find my spirit animal uh, <laughs> did like, you find it they have no it started raining so i mm. actually you know what give me one second let me go grab yeah. this <laughs> so sorry didn't she yeah i love this adorable <laughs> I'm the shock and awe factor of this show. If anybody wants yeah. to be on the show, just know that you're cry. <laughs> okay. That well, cat loves went it. Went on a safari. I tried to find my spirit animal. <laughs> Unfortunately, it started to storm, so I just stopped. I appreciated that I got to see the animals I did, but I got the spirit animal book. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's by Melissa. Can you hold it up closer to the camera? Yep. Cool for our audience. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. So with this book, you intuitively pick your spirit animal. So do you guys want to find out yeah. yours? Okay. Sure. Yeah, let's yeah. Go. yeah let's please. Okay. On. So who wants to go first? Justin. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to flip through and then you tell me when to stop. Stop. Okay. And then tell me when to stop. Stop. So you got the gorilla. So gorilla symbolizes leadership, respect, and honor. And it means to recognize that you command attention wherever you are. And because of this, you must show the regal qualities of this noble animal in all that you do. So (laughs) does that resonate with you so far? A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. As you are a good leader and know that good things can come to those who wait. You're a team player, often the leader who encourages others to be the best that they can in every situation. Uh, that sounds like me. I see that, yeah. <laughs> I was just doing that. <laughs> going so, that's awesome. I say, yeah, the, it goes more into depth too, but that's really cool. I can and yeah, or, whatever. Yeah. Okay, so um, it means that you take your responsibilities seriously and that you are confident and decisive in the leadership roles that you have taken on. Um says you're aggressive if you feel someone you're protective of has been wronged <laughs> is that true that's true yeah. these episodes are short lived bursts of anger mm-hmm. once they're past you don't dwell on them gorilla means you're constantly on watch you know what's happening around you even when others think they pulled the wool over your eyes your intuitive nature and sense of balance guide you and says it warns a against being too dominant or materialistic mm. always take what resonates and leave yeah it doesn't yeah. but yeah oh, that's interesting that's so cool i love this little book you know, yeah. you can have a i was say you're reading that animal book and that cat is going crazy yeah, he's, <laughs> he's like animal spirit let me show you something <laughs> I wonder what her spirit animal is. Okay. Yeah, right. Dude, I'm laughing so hard because she's just like talking to the wall and then attacking yeah, it. And then yeah, yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, she's a little cutie. All right, I want to hear Luna's. Let's hear Luna's. Yeah. Uh... All right, Luna, your turn. Okay. 
Oops, let me start up here. Tell me when stop. Stop. Okay. Tell me when to stop. Stop. You got the fox. So when the fox shows up, it means to spend more time with your family, participate in family outings and activities, and just spend quiet time with one another. Um, it says you have incredible eyesight, which is a sign to watch what people do more than listening to what they say. <laughs> Actions speak louder than words, and at this time, you'll glean useful information through sight instead of sound. And it means you should stay in the background unnoticed. How does that sound so far? Yeah, it does. I don't spend a lot of time with my family at all, and I probably should. And quiet time is nice. Yeah. And I always find myself being the one charging in the front, but I should. I do watch a lot of people. Like, I'm very much a watcher. So, yes. I would say I could see you being people watcher. Uh, <laughs> especially if you're into all this. Yeah. yeah, I see that spirit people behind watching. you. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it says Fox warns to be wary of people who don't have your best interest at heart. Are they being sly and cunning, trying to trick you? Fox means to be alert to these qualities within yourself, but also look for them in others. They can be very re revealing of the individual's true intent. Uh, this sounds like it. Be great. You're a great problem solver, and you are unafraid to take risks. I can yep. see you doing that. Yep. It assists when you want to stay out of sight and observe the activities of those around you. If you're traveling as a family, fox is a great animal to ask along to keep you safe. There you go. If you find yourself in any kind of predicament that you need to get out of, fox's ability to slip away will aid you. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's actually a hundred percent spot on, really. That, I was gonna say, that, <laughs> that probably resonated with you quite well. Look at yeah. you. Okay, Erica coming out swinging. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because my friend she showed me this book and last summer and I went to her house and I got the jackal. And earlier that day I had changed my phone background screen to this jackal photo. Oh, that's phone. awesome. <laughs> in your life right now or like uh, natural earthy tones and it was made out of or made with earthy tones the it's because you're psychic yeah <laughs> is what because you're, you're psychic, psychic. yeah <laughs> i know i've had so many psychic moments where i'm like damn like i wish i like would have known i was actually picking up a message some of them have been quite dark and like with deaths and yep those ones are scary. You remember that was that TV psychic? Was it Mrs. Cleo or some shit? Remember her? And she wore like the turban and yeah, maybe the car. The <laughs> she was like a big scammer. She ended up being a big scammer at the yeah. end. Of oh, that. Yeah. 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 I think, yeah. Did that come out right that she was a scammer? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah. the fact that like she just made wake during the like the maybe the nineties was it? And she. Yeah, it was the nineties. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Yeah, I just there, remember those commercials. There was a, I remember there was a public access show, and um, me and my sister called in because this is a lot like in the nineties. <laughs> These people that are around this table. They claimed they were, they were psychic, and they were just taking phone calls and stuff. And we were just you know fucking with them because I think they were legit. They didn't seem legit at all. So again, um, we kind of like just played along with. What they were saying, obviously, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, exactly. How'd you know? And then everybody's getting like pats on the back, like, oh, I saw that one coming flying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was, but yeah, again, there are these, yeah, there, there are these people who claim that they can do shit, but then yeah, at the end of the day, they can't. And I love how Luna has shown herself multiple times to me that she's got the power. And he's got the shit. And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> and I love I love seeing the real shit. And um, no, it's really cool. Those people yeah. that don't do their job or say what they can do, because like when I bring up astrology to other people, they're like, Oh, you know that stuff is so vague. And I'm like, no, it's not. Like if you find a good astrologer who knows what they're doing or intuitive person by any right. means. 
they're excellent. They're great tools for knowledge yeah. and guidance. Or getting their life in the right that. direction. Yeah. Like I'm like, oh, you should go meet with my astrologer. They're like, no. Like, like I astrology will you. tell you why your childhood was it was the way that it was. You growing up, your personality, what field of business you should be in, what you should not, when you should do things, when you shouldn't. Should you have kids? Where you should? It tells you so much about you, your parents, your family, your relationships. Like it gets deep. Like I had a reading on mine fully, and it scared me. And I was like, you know, it actually makes sense. It actually makes perfect sense for me. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to get a full reading of mine. Yeah. I don't, I don't read astrology like that. Unfortunately, it takes years and years of practice and work and studying. It's, it's yeah. a lot. If we had a, we had a girl, at least that does the yeah. star charts, maybe I could direct you to her and she's, yeah. in, she's in Chicago. I actually went to high school with her too and just had a history with her, but yeah, she's very talented and, um, but yeah, I can, I can lead you some, that leads I would love to, to that yeah. in-depth reading yeah. of my charts i'm like i don't even know where to start if i wanted to learn and like you said it takes years to of studying i'm like no i want to put that concentration into other areas of my life so go to cafeastrology.com and it will, it will cafeastrology.com. You need to know your birth date, where you were born and the time you were born. So you might have to ask your mama. Um, <laughs> and then it'll give you every single house that is affiliated with what signs for you. And you can read a lot of things about yourself. It won't make any sense at first, but you can dig into it and stuff. Mm -hmm. You can at least start there and it's free. It doesn't cost anything. Hey, what was that commune that you were talking about, Luna, where the psychics all lived and you had to kind of Ca prove your... Casadega, Casadega, yeah. Florida. You ever heard of this place, Erica? No. Where is it's this? A, it's a spiritualist camp. It's in Florida. It's um, it's called Casadega, Florida. It's basically like um, a massive. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's like a community, a neighborhood with actual houses, mm -hmm. and all people with abilities live in this camp type of thing and it's got a it's got a hotel and everything and you have to be able you have to like prove that you have abilities without tools without tarot without anything that you legit have abilities to be able to live in this particular neighborhood with that these crazy people. Visit it and awesome and stuff. like the x-men <laughs> yeah i mean i could probably live there if i wanted to but it's literally in the middle of nowhere and i i don't yeah no yeah. but yeah um definitely you can go get like readings over there and you can stay in the haunted um hotel like i did it's really cool i I honestly felt at home i didn't want to leave i did not want to leave i actually felt like normal for the first time in my life because i'm like sitting there having my coffee and doing my tarot reading and my journaling and this medium goes by and she comes up and talks to me she says by the way i need to tell you this and everything and they're talking to the dead and everything and they're just walking through this lobby and i'm like i found my people <laughs> Like this is it, for me, you know, it's really cool. Yeah. It's, it's free to go to. I mean, you can just go and look at the, you know, the spiritualist camp and stuff. It's really freaking cool. Casadega. Casadega. Yeah. Is it like D-E-G-A? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. Yes. C-A-S-S-A-D-E-G-A. -S 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 Casadega. Awesome. Casadega. Yeah. Casadega, Florida. It's really pretty we're, out there. We're bending spoons over here. Yeah. And you can also buy <laughs> like sounding rods and Ouija boards out there. You can all of it. That's awesome. That's really can you move cool. things without touching them, Luna? Uh yeah. I I've always wondered. Um, I can um manipulate smoke, like candle smoke and incense smoke. I can do that, but oh, that's cool. Like, you know, no, I haven't really been able to move objects. That's not a psychic ability I have. It would be really cool if I could, though. That'd be yeah. I, the kinesis. Yeah, yeah. I'm really cool. seeing some videos of some they can just you know knock things off their hands just without even oh. touching. I'm yeah. So that is yeah but buddhists um when you get to the highest level whatever that is for them they can levitate yeah oh uh, yeah. yeah so I believe that's, that it's all about energy yeah so say they they unlock the keys to the mind right there the monks jesus christ 
Yeah, I got into Reiki for a little bit um, when I was younger, when I was 15. I became a Reiki master to when I would just go up to a leaf without touching it and I could make the leaf bounce and dance and move back and forth without touching oh, okay. it with the energy. Oh, awesome. so, so I think if you trained yourself more, maybe you can lock more secrets. Yeah. I got to get to that point in my life. I'm 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 on my way of buying land right now to get away from everybody and like build my own little place out there with a farm and everything so that maybe I, I can be, you know, in that area and like finally find that peace because when you're in town, not a lot of people say it, even though you're in your own home, you can still feel that energy from other people and I feel like you have to be in the perfect setting to really hone in those type of abilities and find peace. So maybe on my land and property, you guys will see me levitating and shit on YouTube. Eventually. <laughs> That'd be awesome. David Blaine <laughs> shit on YouTube. I feel you though. I used to live in the city of Chicago and downtown Milwaukee. And it's just way too many energies. It drives you insane. You know, if you have issues with people in public and I'll always tell this, this is a really cool just to find like a cool hat or a cape or a cloak or something, cover your head, your crown chakra, that will help calm down everybody else's energy. So grocery stores, particularly, I can't stand malls, carnivals, things like that. If you cover your head, you'll find yourself being more at peace. Hmm. Uh, I actually have this page. It's an Egyptian one. It's oh, black cool. and gold, and I can see out it, but no one can see in. So, like oh, last time, I'm walking around this music festival, and I just dang walk yeah. around. Everyone's staring at me, like could she even see? And I'm like, I'm walking straight, like I can see. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> hot. I feel free in it, you know. And I have uh -huh. all my whole hat collection. I love being in my little hats, my sunglasses. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yes. When you have abilities like this, you got to cover your head in a lot of areas because people will drain you. Yeah, it's good to know because I definitely feel drain so fast and that's why i always I hate to send you one of my new um things so i make like little spell jars now oh. and i haven't actually launched these yet so you're the first person to know but basically i put my own herbs oils uh crystals and everything in there and i seal it and uh, you can make it to earrings necklace keychain um you know and all of that so i'll send you maybe your own personal one or whatever Aww. yeah i would you love that so i'm making intention oils right now too i'll send one back cool. to you That'd be yeah, great. I, love it. I make my own oils too and I love it. I love it. It's so oh, cool. I, I hate buying them because I'm just like, I don't know the person's energy that made them. I'd rather just make my own, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Say I'm when I start my batches, I'm like, I'm gonna get uh the healing frequencies put in, you know, say some rituals and gotta make them on a good day so that I can really put the intention into them. And have you launched your business already? Uh, so I started off as Miss Loves Candles. Um, so I've been making candles for the past six, wait, no, it's been like almost 10 years now. But now I'm expanding it to intention oils and whatnot. And I'm building it slowly. So it's kind of been launched. But my intention oils, they have not yet. <laughs> well, let me know, because all, all I'll do is just post you on my TikTok or Facebook. And yeah. Oh well, my gosh, thank you so much. I'm so glad I introduced you girls because I want you girls yeah. to network with each other thank and uh, thank yeah, you. Be, I think it'd be awesome. But yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up here for now and uh, we'll definitely have you back for future uh, shows because we like to have like big group chats. So I think you'd be yeah. another good aspect oh, to throw some, you know, okay. some funny things in there and whatnot just to be a part of the conversation yeah. and whatnot because I think you deserve to be. And yeah, I think it'd be I'm awesome. for all of your guys' advice and yeah. whatnot. I can't wait to look more into that and learn more and how to. Yeah. Work so tell people where, where can they find you? Yeah. What do you want people to know? Um, so I am the wellness witch on OFTV. You can find me on there. I am expanding to YouTube. It's just wellness, Witch. Uh, I need to get more videos uploaded on there, but I like to have them uploaded on the OFTV platform first. Um, do that. And I'm also Erica Love Vibes on Instagram. I'll post extra footage on there, recipes and for mocktails and whatnot. So I am looking in more into TikTok, but you know, I had an account and I used to get views and then I went to getting less than 15 views on a video so Welcome to yeah. 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 
So I'm trying to go back to Instagram and build that platform again. But that's cool. where you can find me. Cool. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, again, I am so happy that you joined us today. That is so dope. And I'm excited that you guys had me on today. Yeah, no doubt. Well, hey, why don't you stick with us for two more minutes? Yeah. <laughs>